I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of the Federal Trust. And now we're going to show you a, a Federal Trust video on the subject of a federal United Kingdom. Uh, we hope you like it and that you'll go to our website where we have much similar material. Recently, uh, a senior research fellow of the Federal Trust, Dr. Andrew Blick, uh, has written a very interesting piece um, on the difficulties of in installing in the United Kingdom uh, a federal system, intellectually and practically, uh, that he sees difficulties. Uh, but they can be solved in his view. Uh, I'm going to be talking to him about these difficulties and possibilities. Um, and Andrew, I'd like to begin by asking you to define federalism. It's a word that a lot of people use sometimes in a negative sense, sometimes in a positive sense. But what's the objective definition of the term federalism? Thanks, Brendan. Uh, yes, that's, that's a good question. What do we mean by federalism? As you suggested, it's a term that's bandied around quite a lot in debate. I think to get beyond some of that, if we look at it as a system of government, which I think is the most useful way of looking at it for today's purposes, it's a system under which sovereignty, legal authority, constitutional authority is divided between a federal tier, that what you might call a central tier, which it has, is a single system of government which covers the whole country, that's the whole federal country, and then a, a state tier. And that means a, a series of territorial states covering probably the whole of or nearly the whole of the territory concerned. So the, the federal tier has certain powers allotted to it and the states have certain powers allotted to them. And all those states have the same powers as each other. That's, that's the basic definition as I, as I would put it, that you can go on beyond that and talk about things like what, how is this division made? How is this division of power made? It's normally included in, a, in what we would call a written constitution, a constitutional text. That text may approach uh, this division of powers in different ways. For instance, it may decide what powers are kept at the center and then all the other powers which belong to the states exist by implication by those that are not reserved to the center. It may do it in a different way. For instance, it may define the powers that, 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 that belong to the center and the state. So different ways of doing it, but, but that's the, the basic principle. And, and often within such a system, you find that the courts have an important role and there may be a, a Supreme Court or a constitutional court uh, that ultimately decides if there's a dispute between the states and the, and the federal level of government uh, over, over who has the actual authority to do a particular thing, who actually has the power within the constitution, often the courts and that central court may make that ultimate decision. But that's the basic, when we think about federalism, that's, that's the basic principle. And within it, I think an important point also to bear in mind is that the states have powers within their particular areas over, over certain defined things. The, federal system government has a kind of overall authority over, over, the, over the whole state in, in the particular areas it operates, but also there are mechanisms to ensure that the two are bound together. And often that's, that's achieved by some kind of chamber in the federal parliament or the federal legislature having uh, states included within it, either directly elected from within those states or appointed by the state governments or state parliaments. So it's not just about dividing powers, it's also bringing together those territorial states and the federal center in, in, to, to ensure that the whole system functions as one, as, as required. Do you think that the discussion of federalism and the understanding of federalism in this country has been distorted by, by the European debate where very often both Remainers and Leavers seem to regard a federal Europe as being a bad thing? Um, perhaps that was based on a caricature of federalism, but do you think it has affected the internal debate on federalism, this European background? I think certainly the, the term federal has been used and abused in UK political discourse, and uh, not just in relation to Europe, but, but, but its use in relation to the European question has been an important one in contaminating the concepts and also creating confusion about what it means. That goes back an awful long way. I mean, we, we look, for instance, uh, Hugh Gates scholars of the Labour Party uh, uh, about 60 years ago makes a speech at Scarborough talking about uh, uh, 
the, the, the uh, then European uh, com economic community as being a kind of a federal system and the UK, if it joins it, being in danger of becoming just a state within a federal system like a state within Australia or something like that. So it goes back a long way, this, this distortion of the concept of, uh, of federalism by those who are seeking to criticise or be sceptical about or eventually arguing perhaps against joining and then later on arguing in favour of uh, reducing the extent to which we're, we're incorporated into the what became the European Union and later on even arguing in favour of leaving, often deploying this concept of federalism. Now when they've employed that concept they've really only uh, looked at federalism from one particular perspective, that's the idea that, that it's a centralising force, that federalism is about centralising. However, that's not the full picture of federalism. As I said in, in answer to the previous question, federalism is actually about a division of powers between the centre and the states, and it includes mechanisms within it that, that may or may not function entirely satisfactorily, but it includes mechanisms within it intended to ensure that the powers of the state are protected against incursions from the, from the federal level. So, if you talk about European uh, integration as being a federalist movement, which it may well be, I think there's a strong case for saying it is, it's important to, to note what, what federalism really means. It's about a division. It's not just about centralization. But in discourse in the UK, the centralization bit has, has very much been at, been at the center. When, we've, when the term federalism has been employed, the centralization bit has been what's been meant and, and later on obviously famously Margaret Thatcher just to show it's both parties have, have uh, promoted this kind of idea Margaret Thatcher in her Bruges speech in the late 1980s talks about a federal super state and again she's starting to turn against uh, European integration by this time and what's interesting also is that people on the other side of the debate people who've been pro-European integration or think they're pro-European integration or presented themselves as pro-European integration have uh, have often simply accepted this idea that a European federation would be a bad thing. They haven't challenged the underlying concept that federalism, although European integration may be federalist in nature or have a federalist dimension to it, they haven't uh, suggested that, well, it may be federalist, but federalism isn't necessarily a bad thing. And federalism is also about protecting the rights of the state components within it. It's not just about centralization. That's not been a line that's been taken. The, pro-Europeans, for want of a better term, have tended to say, oh, well, obviously European federalism would be a terrible thing, but, but don't worry, uh, Europe isn't really like that, or we can stop it being like that, or uh, if it does get too much like that, we can get lots of opt-outs. So that's really been the way in which the debate's been allowed to develop, and that concept of federalism has become so... Uh, 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 powerful within UK discourse over this long period of time that it spilled over into all discussion, all, all, all mention of the term federalism for a long while has been contaminated because both sides of that debate accepted the idea that in that context it's a bad thing and that's tended to spill over into overall use of the term. Can we distinguish before we talk a bit more about federalism in the United Kingdom between federalism and devolution? Um, we've had a fair amount of devolution in the United Kingdom. How would federalism be different from that? We've had lots of devolution in the United Kingdom, or to certain parts of the United Kingdom, as you say. And it certainly, if you look at the amount of devolution has been, for instance, to Scotland, uh, in, in many ways, some would say Scotland's now, in theory, got more powers than you'd find attached to a state within a federal system. So there's been lots of downward transfer of power, which is what devolution means, to certain parts of the United Kingdom, particularly in the period since the late 1990s onwards. We also had a system of devolution in Northern Ireland before that, between the 1920s and 1970s. The differences are, one, that devolution in the United Kingdom has only been to certain parts of the United Kingdom. There are still parts of England that don't have any devolution at all. So that's one important difference. Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland have got the most developed systems of devolution. Parts of England have got limited devolution. So there hasn't been complete coverage. What's more, 
The devolution that has taken place has been different in every instance. The powers have been different. The system set up have been different. So in a federal system, you'd expect, as I said previously, there to be states covering the whole of the country, or at least nearly all of the country. You might find that the, the capital, the federal capital, isn't part of the state. But, but basically, the whole area has, has states covering the whole of it. We haven't had that. And we'd also expect those powers pretty much to be uniform, that, that, the, that the states would have very similar systems to each other, maybe not identical, but very similar. Certainly, we haven't got that in the UK. So there's two important differences there. Uh, further important differences are we don't uh, in this country have what we would call a written constitution, a document to which all institutions, all laws are subordinate and which is interpreted and enforced by the courts. We don't have that setting out that system of devolution, so it's not protected quite in that way. Also, and this is another important difference, we don't have the mechanisms at the centre that I talked about previously to provide the states with a role in central decision making. We don't, for instance, have a second chamber of our parliament in which the, the states or the devolved uh, systems have a presence. We don't have that. We do have a thing called the Joint Ministerial Council, which allows some kind of consultation between devolved executives and the UK government. But generally, that's that's been accepted not really to work very well. And certainly, the devolved systems don't have any kind of firm legal position in, in the taking of decisions on a UK basis that might impact upon them. So those are lots of reasons why, although there are certain similarities that, that involves a downward territorial uh, sharing of powers, uh, actually devolution is very different as well from, from feder federation. Why do you think it is that um, now um, politicians are gradually coming to look at the options for a federal um, United Kingdom. Is it partly because Brexit has made devolution much more difficult, um, particularly in, in, say, Scotland? It is an interesting point that, uh, that, in, that the, the, the kind of misuse, one might say, or the misapprehension of the term federalism and the contamination of the term federalism helped to take us out of the European Union and in the process has revived or stimulated interest in that same concept, in that concept of federalism. That's going on. Why is it going on? I think probably because uh, uh, the kind of tensions, as you suggested, thrown up by Brexit are very problematic for the future functioning of the United Kingdom. It's created all kinds of difficulties in Scotland because the Scots, as many of them may see it, voted to remain within the European Union. In fact, you could argue they voted to remain within the European twice, in 2014, or three times, in 1975, in 2014, when they were told uh, the only way to, to guarantee your membership of the European Union is to stay within the United Kingdom. And then again, in 2016, they voted to stay within the European Union, yet they're being forced to leave it, so it's throwing up problems there. It's creating immense difficulties, as we know, for Northern Ireland huge difficulties. So what is the status of Northern Ireland? What is the position of Northern Ireland within the Union? What is the relationship of Northern Ireland with Great Britain and with the Republic of Ireland and the European Union? Those are so difficult to resolve. I don't know what's going to happen there. It's creating enormous problems. Also, other problems, uh, I mean, even, even in Wales, although Wales did vote leave, there are various issues around uh, the way in which powers that were previously uh, held at a European Union level are now being returned to the UK, in theory at least. How are those powers actually going to be used? What say will the devolved institutions have in the use of those powers? Or will the decisions basically be driven at UK level? So in those three devolved areas, there are problems. There have also been uh, more general arguments about uh, internal dispersal power within England, the whole, all these debates going on about territorial inequalities. And also let's not forget that London also voted to remain within the European Union. And London has been having some challenging times recently and may be pretty negatively affected by Brexit. So for all of those reasons, there are challenges around the way in which the United Kingdom is being governed. And uh, it may appear that the, the federal system we've been developing since, sorry, the, uh, the devolved system that we've been developing since 1999, which has aspects of a federal system within it, but isn't by any means fully federal, looks like it's not quite working any longer and it may appear to some that uh, federalism offers some kind of solution to some of those problems that 
that it could create a more stable system, that it could uh, make Scotland feel like it's got more reason to be part of the United Kingdom, that it could head off future possible difficulties in Wales involving uh, perhaps a, an, in, an increase in independence se sentiment there, and also that it might uh, uh, offer some kind of way of, of dealing with issues involving Northern Ireland. And from the point of view of Wales, for instance, it might offer, so from the point of view of those devolved territories, it might offer a stronger role in, in the United Kingdom and in, in making decisions for the whole United Kingdom in future that at present they don't feel like they possess. So there are reasons why it might seem to offer some solutions. But I have the impression from your article that you don't believe that all the politicians who use the word federalism now have thought through all the difficulties which come from the historical and constitutional position of the United Kingdom. Would you like to mention some of those difficulties that you think uh, would be particularly burdensome? Yeah, I think uh, th there are, there are uh, certainly lots of things which federalism could offer the United Kingdom and, and I, I felt that for some time and I think you know it's, it's been apparent for a long while that we should be thinking more seriously about federalism as a way of managing the United Kingdom as a state. However, uh, I wonder how far those who are now talking about federalism have really engaged with some of the challenges that have to be overcome if we're going to make federalism work for the United Kingdom. So let's look at some of those challenges. Uh, one which has cropped up again and again over the years when, when in the UK we thought about possibly adopting a federal system, it was being engaged with, for instance, by Winston Churchill more than 100 years ago, is uh, what do we do about England? If we have a federal system in which uh, you have a a state component for every single part of the UK. You have a series of states across the whole UK. Uh, what do we do with England? Do we have England as a single state or do we have England included in the series of, of In some ways, the neatest solution uh, would be to have England as a single state. England's regarded as a nation, just as Wales and Scotland are regarded as nations. Northern Ireland is more complicated. And I, I suspect that some people would argue there's, although I, I would query, so I would query this proposition to some extent, but some would argue that there's a clear English national identity. Therefore, you've got a ready-made identity, just like you've got a Welsh identity and a Scottish identity. Again, whether you've got a Northern Ireland identity is another question. But you could say there's there's a there's a there's a, a kind of popular attachment to the concept of England. Therefore, if you establish English institutions within a federal system and have an English state is a good expression, it's a political expression of that pre-existing cultural identity. It's neat you have an English parliament within, Eng within a UK federal system. That's one, one option that's offered. However, uh, the question then arises, how, what does that, how does that system actually function in practice? Does, uh, to, to put it rather crudely, does England then become the equivalent of Prussia within the German Empire, where it can basically dominate the whole system? Where it has, uh, if it has votes, say, within a federal uh, chamber of the UK Parliament, commensurate with its population size, that would mean it would have 85% of the votes within that federal system. Would it be completely dominant? Would, would you have a first minister of England speaking for 85% of the population and probably more than 85% of the material wealth of the, of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the UK as a whole, the UK Federation as a whole, uh, or would you have a First Minister of England working alongside a UK Prime Minister? How would that work? If they're from different parties, that would probably be a problem. If they're the same party, I'd say it could be even worse. So you've got that challenge uh, being faced uh, by, by that system. And if, on the other hand, you were going to introduce, and, and how long would Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland really want to stick around in a United Kingdom that function like that? All the things they complain about, all the things that the nationalists within those countries might complain about, they probably complain about even more in, in a system like that. But what if I think there are two other problems that you've mentioned in yeah. the past parliamentary yeah. sovereignty yeah. And, um, and the procedure to get there. Can you briefly yeah. talk about them and, and then we'll need yeah. to wrap it up? Yeah, sure. So we've got the problem of parliamentary sovereignty, as I've suggested. Uh, in the UK, we don't have a tradition of a written constitution. We have a uh, tradition 
of Parliament being in charge, the UK Parliament having the last word on everything ultimately. A Parliament can do whatever it wants in a final analysis. That's how the theory runs anyway. If we're going to have a federal system with a genuine division of powers between federal and state level, that has to go. And you have to have a constitution that's superior to everything, including Parliament. I don't think that the politicians who are talking about federalism in fairly vague terms at the moment have really grappled with that. And do they really, really want to change that? And once, and once they get to power and are in a position to do something about that, are they really going to want to hand that power over? This is a perennial problem of, of reform. So that was one, one certain challenge. And then, yes, how do we get there? As I suggested, that how do we actually, what kind of, mechanism do we have that takes us to this federal system and ensures you've got enough consensus around whatever system is arrived at to make it work that's all very challenging as well and probably involves a party or parties coming to power who are actually committed to that and are committed to that in such a way that uh, it's very difficult for them to wriggle out of it once they get to power because as i suggested once you get to power and you suddenly find you've got this thing called parliamentary sovereignty at your disposal it's quite a uh, quite uh quite quite difficult to 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 surrender it to a system where judges who you know often i i've got nothing against judges but they often get a bad press are seen as being the final arbiters of what the constitution is and are able to overrule even the uk parliament that you've just won power in so those are those are some of the big challenges and very difficult question and whether we go down a an all England model for federation or, or an England of regions is another one that's going to need to be answered. So there's, there's lots of reason, I think, to suppose a UK federation could work and it could offer some, some, some solutions to some of the problems, not all of them, but some of them. And I think there's lots to be looked at there, but we've got to really start engaging with some of those difficult questions sooner rather than later. Yeah, Starmer has spoken approvingly of the idea of a federal United Kingdom. Um, he and his party are committed to reviewing their constitutional ideas. Um, it will be very interesting to see whether that comes, uh, comes to a head in a recommendation for a federal United Kingdom. As, as always, um, those who live longest will know most. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you.